When I was a student, I did my work placement in a small salon in Putney. Mm -hmm. So I had been on the course for probably about a year and had worked as a student, but never really had any idea of what a real therapist was like. So I think being in a placement gave me an idea of what it was really like to be a therapist and how the treatments you were doing benefited the client and how they enjoyed them and the thanks that you got. So I think that motivated me to come back to college and I wouldn't say take it more seriously, but have a better understanding of what I was training to do. My motivation for teaching, I think, comes from, especially with technical teaching, comes from the fact that I feel as if I received some very bad technical teaching. And I feel that I want to, to give students a, a technical experience that they can actually make, they can understand something and they can make choices. I remember when I was studying here, in fact, uh, Curtain Road, a long time ago. Um, I remember the tutor, um, Richard, he was saying, when I actually first came to learn the trade, he was saying to, that you could ask the same question a hundred times, it doesn't matter, just keep asking. I don't want you to make mistakes and come to me all flustered. And I remember this being like, you know, that just settled all my nerves and I thought that was amazing. Something that motivated me wasn't actually a formal taught experience, but it was reading a book by Bill Bryson. And I know that sounds really kind of eclectic. The thing about Bill Bryson is he's interested in everything. He wonders about everything. He's curious, he's fascinated, he looks into it and he can then tell an amazing story about whatever it is in a way that really inspires you and brings it to life and makes you want to know more. Picking up a copy of uh, the dialectic of enlightenment in a market in Cambridge and some tutor sort of in some way um, engaging me in discussion about that. Whatever has motivated me has always been when the material has been way of my head and I've had to really fight to understand what has been said. I kind of evaluate my life by having those aha, oh my god, that makes sense moments. Um, and lots of those came from me during my time here at LCF, actually, before I became a tutor here. Um, especially the com combination for me, really, of, of understanding technical know-how and, and conceptual knowledge and, and where those two bridge together. I'm getting quite emotional about this. She came in in my second year. I actually completely bugged her and said, I, I re she was an external tutor. She worked on a project with us. I said, I'm so inspired by you. I want to come and work with you. And that was it. I sort of ended up leaving college. I ended up working with her for the next sort of 10, 15 years. My PGC uh, experience actually was very useful, and especially with my uh, tutor who came to uh, the, um, my, uh, my session, one of my sessions, mm -hmm. and uh, gave me fantastic feedback on what I can improve, I should improve. Workshops I've done where the, the teachers are so passionate about what they're teaching that it enthuses you about the subject. They come across as so positive and encouraging that it's, it's almost infectious. He was a Buddhist person who chanted a lot and it, he was explaining to me how that chanting process was all about affirmation and about uh, getting you know, real meaning and power behind their chants, but I kind of used that in my teaching. For me, it was a, a sort of, it was an aha moment of understanding about group work for myself, having been a teacher for a long time, that actually you can learn a lot by listening, not necessarily being active, but listening to other people. Teaching was something I always wanted to do, but had to develop that skill, and I'm still developing it with uh, my colleagues, mm -hmm. but um, feedback from the PG Cert tutor was very, very important in that process. I think it's very important for us to, you know, mo to, to get students motivated, for students to feel that they are, that we know who they are, and that's quite hard to begin with. How do you, how do you get to know students? And if you've got a big group and things like that. But I think one of our roles, to, you know, as a teacher, is trying to keep the students motivated, is to find ways of doing that. Definitely, one of the most motivating things I've done uh, has been working with Lego to model students' learning journeys, to have a look at personal and professional development, to work with teams on team identity and understanding how they tick. So it's an incredibly versatile methodology, but the wonderful thing about working with LEGO is it's three-dimensional.
original, you're thinking through your fingers, and it just brings the whole experience alive. It's a very bonding experience, and it actually unleashes a lot of deep learning. It's a collective group thing where, where I've been able to say, look, I'm going to do this exercise with you, and we're all very much connected in this class and everyone's contribution is as relevant as anyone else's so it's about inspiring a kind of collective group involvement. Sweets. Sweets work really well. Um, I think because they make people happy and I was thinking about this, they, they make you remember when you were a child and when you had sweets, when your mum said yes you can have a pack of sweets. I hope I give the students some freedom with the choices that I set before them. I always try to give them several ways of doing something and then they have the freedom and they they need to start thinking about how why would they choose a certain method i hope i don't in any sense harass but i believe in first draft second draft go back to the drawing board would this be clear to someone who hasn't swatted for 10 weeks in fact, I would say that more and more, it's the passion of you saying, take a risk. We did a project with women prisoners and they were lifers and we arranged to take a group of about 10 students into the prison. And again, for them, I think that was a really, really pivotal moment because they realised that it wasn't all about me, me, me. What motivates a lot of students is the ability to explore things but of which are their own interests, um, but at the same time aware of the kinds of parameters that they're encouraged to explore in. I use comedy. Trust me. Uh, if you ask any of my students, they will say to you that um, I make them laugh, uh, they make me laugh, and we have this amazing relationship. So my style and my approach is fun. Inspiring students to not sit back and be uh, passive recipients, but to be involved in the class. And that's, that's in presentation skills, that's been invaluable. I like to look for the best in the students. So even if they've done something completely wrong, there might be one element that we could take from it and say, okay, the best thing you did here was this and then reinforce the good and then build on that. Smiling, um, being personable, um, being strict, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, speaking to people as human beings. Curiosity, questions, group work, um, engaging with students in whatever way, but really seeing that on a personal level as well. I think all of that's important. Because when you're happy and smiling, no matter what happens, you, you keep going, even if you make a mistake. So for me, I always say comedy. It's like me being on stage, and trust me, it is amazing. If you ask them, we have a great time.